How you doing today? This is attorney Albert Reese and I'm here to tell you don't pay that bond. If you or your loved one is an undocumented immigrant who's been recently detained by local authorities in the county or the sheriff's office, do not pay the bond for that detained loved one. Recently, the state of Texas and states throughout the country have passed new laws based on the federal government and the attorney general's directive that local law enforcement is now authorized to detain immigrants and hold them without bond. Now, you may call a bond company and the bond company will tell you, well, yeah, it doesn't look like there's an immigration hold at this time. Let's hurry up and pay the bond. But you should not pay that bond because more than likely what will happen is as they're coming out of the jail to receive their uh, bond release, the immigration ICE officer will stop them and verify their U.S. identification. If that individual does not have a valid driver's license or Texas ID or an ID from a state in the United States that's valid, they will be put under immigration hold and they will not be released. In most of the cases, that means that the bond money that you've paid will not be returned to you. Let's go a little further. So your loved one is, not, is undocumented. They get stopped for passing a stop sign or a DWI or whatever, and they get put into the county jail system. They're given uh, an opportunity for bond, but then you find out that they're not able to be released because they have an immigration hold. What does that mean? That means that they're going to remain in the custody of the county until that charge, that criminal charge, has been dealt with by the county. So we suggest that you don't pay the bond, that you get an attorney immediately, and that you recommend to the attorney or you work with the attorney and ask for them to file with the court what's called a motion for speedy trial. That motion for speedy trial is going to take that immigrant out of the regular processing time for court and give them a court date much sooner. That's going to allow them to preserve their rights in immigration court because in almost every one of these cases, what we're seeing now is that these people are being transferred uh, after they are at the conclusion of their immigration case to immigration detention centers throughout the state of Texas. Now, we need them to hurry and get out of the, the county system because if any undocumented immigrant is held in the county system for more than six months, when they get to immigration, they're going to lose their rights to immigration uh, options as far as staying in the country and asking for immigration relief. So you want to get that speedy trial immediately uh, set before the court so that they can process that, that immigrant and get him a court date. If you don't get a motion for speedy trial, your loved one could be waiting for a trial with everyone else uh, who's not able to get out on bond for two, three months before they see a, uh, an immigration, uh, before they see the county judge. That means that they've already exhausted half of their uh, allotted time limit to be uh, in detention. Now, if they've ever been previously detained, that time is calculated in addition to the time that they're now detained. So if they were detained at some point in the past for a month or two, and now they're in jail for three more months, they're now looking at five months in total and maybe it'll pass six months depending on the last time they were detained and that means that uh, they're no longer going to be eligible for any type of immigration relief when they get before that immigration judge. Uh, so that's going to be the short uh, information I'm, I'm offering today. I wanted to share that with you so that if you're in that situation or you know someone who's in that situation, you can help them uh, avoid being cut off for their immigration benefits. Please give my office a call.